If you hood educated, I'm glad you made it. Allow me to unfold my knowledge, wisdom, and understanding from a hood brother's point of view to all of you here, there, and everywhere. Now check me out. <laughs> hey, look. Before I get into this demonstration, just allow me to say this right here. Um, if you doing YouTube, if you rapping or, or doing anything, man, and, and you got some schmutt on your name, and you, you know, done sat down with them police and stuff like that, I would advise you to, you know, to run it by 1090 Jake first. You know, just, hey, brother, you know, uh, I'm thinking about rapping and things like that, you know, I'm like, you gonna put me out there or not, brother? I mean, is 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 it possibility, man, that you can look the other way on this one right here, and let me, you know, just rap like I'm a real gangster and things like that, or maybe let me blog on YouTube like I'm this, you know, this gangster and I can't stand snitches and stuff like that. Do you think you can look the other way and let me do that? Because I'm talking about, man, this man right here, bro. Now I'm not finna lie. I'm surprised. I'm talking about like I'm surprised. And the reason why I'm surprised because uh the emphasis that King Yeller used to put on like, you know, I hate snitches and rats and you know anybody that sit down with the police. I'm not with that and all this old type of stuff. So this is what I need you youngsters to pay close attention to. Listen to what I'm about to tell y'all. There are people in your neighborhood that is in your gang right now doing everything that King Yellow was doing, but got statements to the police. If I wouldn't have never seen these documents, this 29 page voluntarily statement of King Yellow doing all that telling, you couldn't have paid, I'm, I'm talking, bro, I wouldn't have believed you unless I seen the paperwork because the way this man so-called hates snitches so much. So I'm telling you youngsters and some of you classic brothers that are in them streets doing all that illegal activity, there are people around you right now that's demonstrating like King Yeller. Man, I can't stand rats. Uh, this snitch K. Uh, if if you if you a rat, I ain't got nothing to say to you. Uh, talking bad about other rats and all type of stuff. But all along, the sat right across from the police, who's supposed to be the op of all gang bangers. Yeah, the police are the main ops of gang bangers. So why sit down from him, somebody that's trying to put you in the penitentiary? You find it comfortable to sit down with him and just start talking about anything freely. The man told King Yeller before they even started the conversation, you have a right to remain silent. Hold on, y'all ain't heard me, wait a minute. The man told King Yeller, you have a right to remain silent. What does that mean? Can all King Yeller had to do was just say, uh, I want to exercise my right to uh, remain silent. That would have been the end of everything. But King Yeller ain't want to remain silent. The fact that he sat down across from a police detective, a gang expert, tells us that he wanted to talk to the police. He wanted to tell the police something to get about them gun charges. Yeah, he wanted to give them something, hoping that it would get him some leniency when he sat there in front of that judge. But when he find out all the information that he gave the police wasn't going to work in his favor, then he tried to get the whole demo he tried to get the whole demonstration suppressed. Oh, y'all ain't gonna use that to help me get no time off. Okay, well I want to suppress that then, man. Y'all throw that out, man. You know, redact the whole statement. You see what I'm saying? These is game bangers. 
This is gang life. Like I tell y'all all the time, I'm speaking to you young brothers and you classic brothers. It don't pay. You got people like King Yeller. This man right here uh, can't stand snitches according to his music and according to his blogs. But sat down and had what? A, a 20 minute, 30 minute conversation with one of his main ops, the police. Police asked him, let's talk about what happened. So according to the reports, King Yeller, fresh out the joint, pistol on him. This is the reports. Parks in the handicapped parking space. I got a gun on me and I'm talking about I'm fresh out the joint. I got tattoos all over my face, all over my body, looking like a goddamn gangbanger. Well, I'm gonna park my car in the handicap in the handicap spot. And ain't nothing handicapped about me. Yeah, police sent him. Hey, pulled him, pull, I mean pulled up on him. Hey, what, what's going on with all this? You handicapped? Can you move? Yeah, I can move. Get out the car. Got him out the car, searched him, found the gun, took the gun from his waist. After taking the gun from his waist, took him down there to the police station. And I'm talking about sat down and had a full fledged dialogue, kicking it like they partners. And the crazy part is when they asked King Yeller, where did you get that gun? This man told the police, Kayla. Oh, you got the gun from Kayla? Yeah. What's her last name? He tells him. So you telling us that Kayla bought the gun? Yeah. But who is Kayla? His baby mama. You see women? Women, do you see? Y'all running around in these streets thinking y'all got a gangster boyfriend. He telling y'all to go into to the, the damn gun store to buy guns and to buy ammunition and all this old type of stuff so he can have on him to go kill people with or to commit crimes with. As soon as your game banging boyfriend get busted, what he do? Throw your ass up under the bus. Yeah, it's, she bought it. Yeah, it's, she, it's, it's her gun. Knowing damn well you know the law. You ain't supposed to give no convicted felon no damn gun. You putting your life at risk now. You can go to jail now. If he kills somebody with your gun and they do ballistics on it, then what? That's your gun. It's in your name. When the police come to you and say, hey, look, we did uh, ballistics on the on the gun and, and it comes back to. Oh, I, I, my boyfriend. No, your boyfriend said that uh, he didn't have a gun. That's your gun. You bought the gun. He was way over here. He ain't got nothing to do with that. Now you going to jail for murder. You going to jail for attempted murder. You going to jail for shooting at people. Listen, young ladies, stop buying these guns for these goddamn criminals and let me explain to you why. Because you got to understand something. Why they sending you in the store to go buy the gun and then they have you go say, oh, somebody stole the gun and all that. To kind of get you away from all that, understand something. That gun that you just bought for that boy, he going to go kill somebody with it. And that's your gun. So, in all reality, young ladies, listen to me. You helping these boys commit murder. You helping these boys commit robberies, kidnappings, rapings, and all type of other shit that you don't want to have no part in. Do you want that on your soul? You want that on your spirit? When you go before your father and he say, well, hey, look, uh... You remember that gun you bought, uh, 12 gauge? Yeah, I remember the gun. I bought him. I, I loved him, I thought. Well, you know, he killed five people with that gun. 
you might as well went and killed five people too with that gun because you gave him the gun to go kill people. Somebody hit that like button for me real quick. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button real quick because I'm trying to tell you something that's going to cause you to think so that you can save yourself from all this madness. Now, here it is. It didn't stop there. Because remember, this is a gangbanger sitting down with his main op, the police, having a discussion. They asking him about other gang members, uh, rappers, and everything, and he just telling the truth. Yeah, it ain't snitching. He telling the truth. Yeah, Lil Durk a BD. They 300. Oh, Breezy? Yeah, yeah, he a BD too. You know, now we ain't had no problem with him or nothing like that, but yeah, you know. You sitting down, I mean, look, as a gang member, or let me say this, as a used to be gang banger, man, do you know how uncomfortable I would feel sitting across from law enforcement, knowing that this man does not mean me no good, knowing that this man want to send me to the penitentiary for years of my life. Uh-uh, it's, it's, it's just, no, I can't sit across from you. We talking about my gangbang days, y'all. We talking about when I was in the street. We not talking about right now, but we talking about then. Man, I couldn't, no, uh-uh, no. Why? Because you my main op. It's me against you. Cops and robbers. And this man sitting down there so comfortable. Having dialogue with the police. Let me tell you young brother something real quick. And I need y'all to hear me out. There is somebody. And I got to reiterate this. Why? Because I got to pound in the truth. So that it can get in y'all thick ass skulls. Because sometimes y'all hard headed. Y'all don't like to listen. So I got to pound it in with a hammer. So that you can get an understanding. Listen, I don't care if you white, black, Native American, Asian, Latino. I don't care. There are people around you right now just like King Yellow. Just like King Yellow. They're sitting down with the police. Telling the police everything. All y'all inner workings, everything y'all doing. But they acting gangster around y'all, though. You couldn't tell if they would sit down with the police because the way they act and the way they... I can't stand snitches. Snitch K, snitch that. And some of y'all might say, well, hood educated. We all know that Dirk BD. We all know that, uh, 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 what's the brother name? Uh, Breezy, 600 Breezy BD. We all know they 600, 300. We all know this. We supposed to. We in the streets. That's why we know this. We in the streets. We got an ear to the street. So we supposed to know this. But if you look at the documentation, that police act like he didn't know that. And that's when it becomes telling. That's when it becomes providing information to law enforcement. Because if the police knew, why ask those questions? You see what I'm saying? If the police knew, why ask them questions? The police asking them, hey, it's, uh, so you GD. Yeah, you know, if you wanna, yeah, I'm, I'm, but dude, them over here, they beat, yeah, they beat him. They, they 600, 300. So he providing information. Now, allow me to say something to my hood educated residents right now. I know y'all probably thinking like, damn, hood educated. I thought you was like, you know, you didn't mind, you know, people uh, going to authorities and all this old type of stuff. And I don't. In my age right now, I listen, man, if you cleaning up the community, clean up the community. Do what you got to do. 
But I just need to point this out to the young brothers and the classic brothers that are in these streets that's thinking these streets got something to offer them. I'm just trying to point out to them that, look, King Yellow's not the only one doing this. This has happened all over the United States of America. You got guys just like him, guys just like Trench's News, that can get on here and talking about, hey, man, yeah, we gangsters, we do this, we do that, and be telling like a motherfucker. So before I depart, allow me to say this right here. For all you brothers who are in those streets, even though I don't agree with that street life no more, I'm talking about it is utterly disgusting to me because my eyes is open and I see what that life is like and I understand what that life has to offer me. Nothing but pain, misery, death in the penitentiary. I understand that now. But for those of you who still continue to live that life, because I know a lot of y'all do, because y'all believe in it. I understand that. Let me give y'all some game real quick. Every single last homeboy around you right now, y'all need to do a background check on them. I'm just keeping it 100. I don't care how many people he done killed, shot, stabbed. I don't care how much dope they done sold or what all that. Yeah, y'all need to start doing background checks. Yeah. You got to start doing background checks on your homeboys. You got to start investigating your own homeboys. Because if you not, your homeboy like this here with the police. Yeah. Yeah, we just moved five kilos today. Yeah, we, we, we putting them over at, at what you call house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be there. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to put a gun in there too so, cause, so that y'all can get the federal. So y'all can have the dope and the gun connected to each other. And I'm going to put 5,000 in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that murder that happened last week. Yeah, no, no, that, that that's us. That's us. We did that, yeah. What you call ran up on him with the switch? Yeah, he ran up on him, man, caught him slipping. Yeah, I'm still working on that because I need to get more details. But, yeah, that's us. We did that. Your homeboys is doing that. You might not want to believe it. And if you don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because you ain't got to take it from old hood educated. I'm just an old fool. I made it this age just by being dumb. So you ain't got to take it from me. But when you sitting in that courtroom. Yes. When you sitting in that courtroom. And that prosecuting attorney get the playback and, you know, get the playback tapes and, and talking about the inner workings of what's going on. Then you're going to be like, damn. Hood educated one line. This is Hood Educated, not Lane related. Peace and love, and y'all take care of yourself out there. If I said anything that caused you to think, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And if you're feeling generous, please make a small donation to the channel. Now, before I depart, allow me to give a shout out to some of the blessings that I received this week. Allow me to give a shout out to Rav Carr for the $2 uh, super thanks and the $5 cash app. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Uh, Julian Hunters for the five dollar super thanks. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you. Anthony Bowman for the two dollar super thanks. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate that. James Sackey Jr. for the twenty five dollar cash shout. I don't know if I, you know, gave you your shout out, brother. So that's why I'm I'm shouting you out again because I can't remember if I gave you a shout out. And for the sister Lynette called called well. I believe I gave you your shout out too for the twenty five dollar zeal. But I can't remember y'all know I'm getting ancient, old, antiqueish, and all that old type of stuff. So sometimes you know this mind, this old thing, I don't like to do what it's supposed to do. But if I didn't give y'all y'all shout outs, I'm giving y'all y'all shout outs now. Peace and love, and I really appreciate that from y'all. Not only that though, shout out to the brother Anthony Barkley for the five dollar cash app. Uh, Mr. 202 DC for the ten dollar cash out. Marcus from Memphis for the five dollar cash out. My hometown, man, North Memphis, Hurst Village. Sean for the twenty dollar cash out. Uh, Tony Coles for the five dollar cash out. Emmanuel Scott for the ten dollar cash out. Adria Haley for the five dollar cash out. Tony Presley. For the $5 cash app. 
Thank you all. I really appreciate it. This is Hood Educated, not Lane Related. Peace and love. And y'all take care of yourself out there.